All right, I fulfilled my duties. Um, before you leave today, make sure you get a new quarterly. I know. And uh, for those of you uh, online, uh, Kelly, my understanding is that your mom's already gotten them to you. Barbara, I'll bring one out for you and uh, Mr. Vorak and leave them in your mailboxes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh -huh. You know that gets the law. <laughs> they're not official mailboxes they're, they're inside locked. a building aren't they yeah. <laughs> those aren't like the post office mailboxes <laughs> uh, Don one of your jobs here in Sunday school is keeping an eye on Gail <laughs> keeping, him under, keeping him under control it's hard to do Yeah. <laughs> No one's going to disagree with that. Okay. Well, so let's talk about our Sunday school lesson. Eventually, you know, uh, uh, I'm pick you up. Uh -oh. <laughs> so our pre-lesson story is about salvation. And it tells us that in some way, everyone is looking for salvation. But many look in many areas except the area of accepting Jesus as their savior. People look for salvation in relationships and wealth and all kinds of things. And then it talks, it tells us about a country song that came out in 1980. You remember that song? Yeah, I do remember that song. Yep. And it was a pretty big hit, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Looking for love in all the wrong places. And of course, it's kind of like... Uh, looking for salvation in all the wrong places. And then it talks us about a song that came out in 2021, a Christian song sung by Ann Wilson about my Jesus. And I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that song. I mean, the lyrics sound pretty good, but I don't know that I've heard that song. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And um, it would be nice if that song would have been as big a hit as looking for love in all the wrong places. The first question is, what does the word salvation mean to you? Forgiveness, saving grace. Forgiveness and saving grace. Faith. Faith. I guess lift it up. Of them out of the muck, you know, lift it up out of all of this. Well, salvation certainly, of course, means eternal life for us, and that um, those that believe in Jesus will be have eternal life with Him, and that salvation that saves us from death. And uh, if we're paying attention. It will save us to some extent from sin uh, here on earth. We'll be stronger. Where or to what do people turn to find salvation? Power. 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 Humanity in Christ. Yeah, we know that where we should look is in Christ and accepting him as our savior, following his ways. But we also know, of course, that people look for lots of other things for their salvation. Uh, well, I'd be happy if I just had another X amount of dollars and spend all their a life trying car. to accumulate. <laughs> yeah. If I just had another car, if I just had some other status thing, if I, whatever it might be, there's lots of things that people think about, popularity, et cetera, um, for their salvation in a sense. But we know that's not right. And we know that salvation comes only uh, from acceptance of Christ as our Savior. And question number three, why do we need salvation through Christ to be alive spiritually? Well, the Bible says that's the only way through Christ. The Bible tells us that's the only way? Yes. Without Jesus, we can't really have a relationship with God. And it'd be hard to be spiritually alive if you don't have a relationship with God. In the teacher devotional, not in your books, but in the teacher guide, it talks about attending funerals. 
And it suggested that the uh, author was always sad when attending funerals mm. and was a somewhat emotional person, empathetic person, excuse me, and that when uh, he or she saw people crying at funerals, that this person often ended up crying, et cetera. And, um, but then the author said that the worst thing that um, happens at a funeral, at some funerals, is when there's no evidence that the person who passed had a relationship with Christ. That's right. Because That's then, bad. then you wonder, don't you? Dr. Joey said it was had a message one time about uh, a funeral and the song was I did it my way. He really took an exception to that. He said yeah. if Jesus way, I did it my way. Yeah, I can see why. I mean, if, if doing it my way means with the exclusion of doing it Jesus way, certainly. And we've all probably attended funerals or know someone who has passed and we wondered if they had any kind of a relationship uh, with Jesus, if they had ever accepted him as their savior. And you know of my friend in Texas who at one time was uh, quite religious and who now thinks it's all a bunch of hooey, you know, and so I pray about him and wonder, you know, what happens to Pat? And uh, so, yeah, that, that is kind of a, a bad thing at a funeral when you're concerned about that. But we know that there's always that second opportunity in the end times. Yes, Clarence? Uh, yeah, my, my dad, uh, he told me that uh, he, he wants to live a long life. He wants to live uh, a long life and, and a good life. When, and when, when, when he gets ready to leave the world, uh, he wants Christ. He wants to sleep in Christ. Well, that's good. That's in, good. in the grave, you know, when, when sleeping in Christ in the, in the grave. You know. Right. And, uh, of course, we'd say, well, that's, you know, that's an ongoing process our whole lives. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, someone might say, well, you know, right before I die, I'm going to accept Christ as my Savior so I can get my ticket. <laughs> Well, you might you might not realize. Might miss a bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It might go right on by. And, oh shoot! You know, but uh, well, today's scripture deals with the resurrection of Christ, and hence resurrection of all believers. First Corinthians chapter fifteen is often referred to as the resurrection chapter because it begins with a clear uh, pronouncement of the gospel of Jesus, then discusses his resurrection and concludes uh, with our resurrection because of our faith in him. And so our scripture lesson today is from chapter 15, verses 20 through about uh, 28. So could I have a volunteer to read the first one, verses 20 through 22. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become first fruits of them that slept. But since by man came death, by man came unto the resurrection of the dead. For as Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Yes, thank you, Clarence. And yes. here uh, yes, Paul assures his readers uh, that Christ has indeed risen from the dead. And we know, uh, and, and Paul knew, the evidence. Jesus had been seen by all of his uh, disciples or apostles. After his death, he seemed to all of them, you know, by doubting Thomas. Uh, we also know that Jesus appeared to over 400, 500 uh, people at one time. And Paul himself, though never seeing Jesus uh, I shouldn't say never seeing Jesus, but not seeing him immediately afterwards. But then, of course, Paul had an interaction with Jesus. Where was that? On the way to Damascus. On the way to Damascus. 
So he certainly knew about the resurrected Jesus, and he could share all of these things uh, with the people in Corinth. Question number four, what is Jesus' place in the resurrection of the dead? In verse 20, what does it tell us? The first fruits. The, the first, first fruit. The first one. So he's the first one to be resurrected. Um, not just back to life, because the Bible has lots of periods, lots of individuals who are raised from the dead. But all of those people who were raised from the dead come back into their earthly body and then continue to live out the rest of their earthly life. When resurrection occurs, we get a new body, as it tells us several times in the New Testament. The old body is cast away, and a new body comes in. And the new body is immortal, incorruptible, free of all the things of the world. Question number five, how did death enter this world? Through Adam's sin. Through Adam's sin. Through a man named Adam, uh, who ate the apple, and after that happened, then God cursed him. Uh, he offered it to Eve, or Eve offered it to him, and both ate it. Yes, that's correct, yeah. And of course, that's why men always realize that you got to be careful about women. <laughs> and you'll notice that Robin's not here today. <laughs> I can get away with that. <laughs> Well, she, tell her, though. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Janelle's already got a text on it. Don, Gail's getting ready to talk. Now, check him out. <laughs> you, know, you notice, notice the woman said, woman said person was Adam. Right? Yes, the woman tempted Adam. I mean, uh, Madeline here said Adam, well, Adam should think about Eve. Right? Yeah, yeah, I see where you're going. <laughs> you're going to get in more trouble than I am. So anyhow, because of Adam and that sin entered the world, because he disobeyed God, and uh, I guess if they would have obeyed God, that there wouldn't have been sin in the world and there wouldn't have been death, but there is both in the world. And then question number six, how shall all be made alive? Jesus in Christ. in Christ through Christ by accepting Christ as our Savior. And the Bible tells us that there's no other way except by accepting Christ as your Savior. Reader number two, you get a little bit more, verses 23 through 26. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come when his hand. When, his hand, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all of his en enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. All right, thank you very much. Now here Paul talks about Christ returning and establishing a dominance and dominion over the world. The devil and his angels were God's original enemies. Uh, they desired to become equal to God or maybe even to take over for God. And that didn't go over very well and they were cast away, cast to earth to rule over the earth and ergo sin. And with the entrance, so the devil and his angels obviously were enemies of God. Adam and Eve weren't enemies of God until they fell victim to the serpent. They weren't enemies of God until sin entered into them. And then just like all of us in the world, tempted by sin, then we are in a sense sometimes opposed to God. I hate to use the word enemies, although the lesson talked about people become enemies of God. But I couldn't quite go to that. Uh, but at least oftentimes we do things that seem in opposition to what God would want us to do. And um, question number seven, what will happen to the Lord's enemies? Be destroyed. destroyed. They will be destroyed. It tells Stop us in them. verse 25, they will be under his feet. Yep. 
<laughs> Question number eight. What is the last enemy to be conquered? Death, Death itself. itself. Death itself. In verse 26, it tells us that. So Jesus comes back, establishes his kingdom, destroys all of his enemies, including death. And question number nine, what will happen after all the Lord's enemies are conquered and judged? There will be a new heaven and a new earth. And what will Jesus do? He will have any tears. No sorrow. Yes. No death. Okay, here. Uh, so Christ is a religion, is a religion by faith. Not a religion by confusion. Not religion by confusion. Mm -hmm. Very good. Justin, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, I was just going to answer uh, the question. Um, according to scripture, he's going to turn over the kingdom to God. Yes. After uh, death has been destroyed. Yes, exactly right. To turn over the kingdom to God. And as I was reading the lesson here, it was... Um, a little concerning because it very definitely sounds like two completely different people. And we think of them as different people, but as the same, Jesus was, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Well, that kind of gives us the connection of Jesus as God at the same time as God. And here we have Jesus in a sense coming and taking care of all these things, and then, in a sense, saying to his father, it's all taken care of. But at the same time, three and one and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, I guess I struggled with that a little bit. It almost made Jesus seem distinct, as in completely distinct, but not yet. Janelle? Well, there's been a couple things I've heard in the past that might have explained it to children. You know, it's the Trinity, like an egg. Egg has a shell, white, and a yolk. Any one of those is not going to be a helpful by itself, but all together, they are one. And yes, Jesus has certain responsibilities that are apart from the Father. And the Father has responsibilities apart from the Son. They are and the Holy Spirit, of course, gives us comfort. So it it's all like stirred together, but yet they are separate. And a little bit anyway. Yeah, <laughs> well, there you they're, go. They're, they're, they're dependent perfect. on each other. Or like an apple. Apple has a core with seeds and it has flesh and it has skin. But any one of those parts by themselves would not be very helpful. So they work together. Right. right. And, and it, it kind of all goes with that three and one, you know, and kind of the difficulty. And I, I mean, I certainly have had lots of people ask me, uh, how, how do you explain that three and one thing? I think Tommy and enjoy it. Out of the millions of uh, Muslims that are devout believers of God, but don't believe in Jesus, they left out, right? Uh, God will take care of that. At the final time, but it appears that at the moment they would be on the outside looking in. Except Jesus. Oh, I, I yeah, and the same with Buddhists and Hindus and all, all the rest. Joanne, for me, the simplest ex explanation is: you are a son, a father, and a man. You know, you are all three. And, uh, you know, we have different identities. Yeah. Well, that's very good. Yeah. There's water, too. Water yeah. is water, ice, and vapor. But it's still water. Form of water. Well, reader number that's three, if you'll take the last two verses, 27 and 28. For he has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him, who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. Mm. All right, very good, thank you. Yeah, that was kind of like, one, you know, it's very distinct, uh, Christ God. 
But in question number 10, it says all things will be put under Jesus' feet with one exception. Who is that? God, God, God himself God. cannot be put under Jesus' feet uh, because God is above all. Well, he's not part of creation. He's the creator. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. And question 11, what will Jesus do? He will put uh, everything back to the Father. Give everything back to the Father. That's correct. Um, when it, when everything has been put under him, it's clear this does not include God himself, uh, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him. So then Jesus will be subject to God. And so that concludes with, so that God may be all in all. Why is it important to know that God will be all in all? Worship. Worship? You got to worship God. All right. When, uh, when God, when, when Jesus returns, you have to worship God. God is God. You have to worship God. Very good. Three, four hours a day. You know, that's what he wants. Mm hmm. Anybody else? Why would, is it important to know that God will be all in all? I would say, I mean, just looking at a, a different passage of scripture here, First Thessalonians 4 and 13 lets us know that us as believers, we don't mourn like those who have no hope. So even when death comes or I know we were talking about earlier in the lesson that there was someone who was sad when death comes. We know that as believers, because Christ lives on the inside of us. We don't mourn like other people mourn because we have hope as believers. Yes, exactly. And um, Joanne and I were talking about that a few days ago. And, you know, how important our faith is to us, uh, especially at the time of someone's death. And wondering how it is for those who don't believe. It is sad to go to a funeral of somebody you wonder. And you think they probably did not, um, unless something happened that you were unaware of. They did not, and they are not in heaven. Yeah. But the family always thinks everybody goes to heaven. Not. Well. Not. So it helps us to know about God being all in all. It encourages us to believe in Him and to uh, praise Him for being in charge of everything. I think of the phrase, our God is sufficient. Very good. That's yeah. Anyway, it should encourage us to reach out to those around us that we wonder. And if to help have, to yep. make sure that they are going to heaven. And if they say no, like your friend that's gone wayward, um, you've done what you could and you can continue to pray for them. But yeah. Right. They well, and that, leads to the, that leads to the post-lesson story entitled Accept or Reject. And it tells us about an individual named Stanley. What's Stanley's story? Anybody? He's, What's Stanley's he's pretty story? Pretty well off. <laughs> pretty well off. Likes five-star hotels. <laughs> he's got pretty much whatever he wants. <laughs> And then he came across, he ran into a stranger. What did the stranger ask him? Mm -hmm. Basically, the stranger asked him if he knew Jesus. Yeah. And Stanley didn't know Jesus. And so the stranger presented him with the information about Jesus. And that Jesus was here on the earth, and he's the son of God, and that Jesus preached the gospel, that Jesus was died and crucified and rose from the dead. Give him the whole story. Give him all the good news. He told him that it was by believing in Jesus that you can have eternal life and be resurrected yourself. And what was Stanley's response? Think about it. Not now. Think about it. Yeah. He felt like he was a good person. He didn't need Jesus. Right. And so many people think that, don't they? 
So it's like the guy that comes to Jesus when asking, what do I have to do to get eternal life? Jesus says, you got to give up everything. The guy said, I got a lot. I don't think I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he, Jesus is a Jesus is brother. You know, you could look up to him like a, you, know, you look up to Jesus as if he was your brother, you know, and, and brotherhood and uh, and a good well, friend and a friend. Certainly a good friend. Certainly a good friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Well, question uh, 13. Why do you think people like Stanley prefer to eat, drink, and be happy in this life and not think about eternity? Well, they're, they're living that they're as if they are satisfied and that they don't need much more. So All right. they're self-contained with what they've already got. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Maybe they don't want to do the extra little service work that they would do or to do. Yeah, maybe they're concerned that they'd have to give up some of what they have mm -hmm. in order to follow good, Jesus. Good life and healthy and plenty of material things. They don't don't need Jesus at that time of night. Yeah. You might say maybe it's easier. Maybe it's easier than being devoted to Jesus. It's, it's almost like being a young person when you don't need a doctor. You know you've got your health and you feel good. And why should I go see a doctor? Yeah. I, I feel good, so I don't need a doctor. And That's meanwhile, good. you could have something creeping up on you, you have no idea. Yeah, exactly. Certainly you could. Well, question 14, do you think being alive in Christ means not enjoying this present life? No. no. It depends on what you mean by enjoying. Well, and but, what you get your enjoyment from, but certainly being alive in Christ brings lots of enjoyment by itself. Well, you know, you know where you're going. And, and the things that you do for others brings a great deal of enjoyment. I had a person one time tell me, see, that's how selfish we are. We're just helping other people because it makes us feel good. So we're being selfish. <laughs> I, had a con <laughs> I had a conversation a little bit ago with Mary Meyer, and she says, I'm so used to giving to other people. And I said, yeah, it's different when it, you're the recipient. I said, but you have scattered bread on the water, and it's coming back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And so... Yeah. And question 15, why is choosing or accepting Christ the most important decision you will ever make? Well, you know, uh, God is love and knowledge. Yes. Love and knowledge. Well, it not only makes a difference in the life we live on this earth, but we have the promise of eternal life with God. Yes, exactly right. Uh, it is a, a most important decision because of how we will act towards others. We will love one another. We will treat the, everyone with kindness, regardless of that individual, regardless if that person is an enemy of ours, regardless if that person has a lifestyle that's different than ours. We love that person. We treat them with respect. Jesus didn't look at people that were different and condemn them, regardless of what they did, how they lived, where they were from. Paul takes the gospel to everybody. He doesn't just take it to Jews. He just doesn't, he doesn't just take it to good people. Everyone is welcome. And of course, that's like disciples of Christ church everyone is welcome oh you can't come here because you live like that we don't want you she was let he who is without sin cast the first stone <laughs> don't worry about they could be staking me in the road and say your neighbors, I you would come in I know you sin. Get out. Well, but, 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 but my sin isn't like that person's sin. So don't let them in. See how ridiculous that is? 
Disciples of Christ doesn't believe that at all. Disciples of Christ is open to everyone. We don't have a creed in which you have to say, I don't drink, I don't dance, I don't smoke, I don't go with the girls that do. It doesn't, there's no song. <laughs> it's sort of like that. My mom used to recite that. Yeah. yeah. But we don't have that. That's what she was raised on. So we had to have open arms for everybody. Well, we can't accept you because you feel this way. No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. And Jesus never said that. And by accepting Christ, then we live that way. And if we don't live that way, then we know that we've sinned. We have to make changes in that way so that we accept other people. And our world is certainly filled with lots and lots of different people. But the good thing about today's lesson is it tells us about eternal life. It tells us about the resurrection. That all of us are, in a sense, heirs to because of our faith in Jesus. Yes. So amen to that. Clarence? Well, you know, uh, Jesus is, is a very, very uh, brilliant kingdom. A brilliant kingdom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ever good in hope and life, everlasting, everlasting hope. And, Everlasting knowledge. <laughs> well, that's exactly right. Thank you. And thank you all for being here today. Thank you to our visitors. Yes. And uh, certainly makes it enjoyable. And uh, we're glad that Alberta is back after her trip down to Broken Arrow. And we're glad that Brooks are back. We haven't seen them for a while. And then Carolyn, we missed you last week. We went to Community Crystal. So we're certainly glad. There's still a few people missing. Um, of course, Merlin had to go to work, uh, so he was here for church. That was nice. David had to go down to Butler to take care of some business, so that's why he's not here. Um, Sambini, I'm not sure. No? Okay. And Hans Dr. <laughs> probably down to late. <laughs> like, yeah. So, okay. And, and Harwoods, of course, went to church uh, with their son. But uh, if you'll bow your head to uh, be in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity for all of us to enjoy the fellowship of each other, the knowledge of each other, the ideas of each other as we study this lesson about the importance of accepting Christ as our Savior so that we will have eternal life and so that when he is the first fruits of the resurrection that we too shall be there with him. And that when he turns this world over to his father and the kingdom will be established, that we will be there as well. Father, we thank you for this church. We thank you for our minister. We thank you for the disciples of Christ as a denomination that is open and accepting to all people. And we ask that we continue to realize that and that we practice that in our lives that we refrain from being judgmental of others. And Father, we have many people to lift up in prayer. We certainly would ask that you would um, keep Spoonie's school district and all the teachers and students there that are in this rather chaotic situation, that you be with them and you be with uh, Spoonie as she begins uh, this year, and uh, be with Kelly as she uh, continues teaching. We ask you to be with uh, bus drivers throughout the nation that are having to drive those little yellow school buses all around and uh, suffering from the really high temperatures. We ask that you would be with Iva uh, Shanahan, uh, Janelle's friend uh, who's injured in a motorcycle accident. And we ask that you would be with Virginia's grandson, um, Isaac, who has a tumor in his foot and will soon have it operated on. Father, we ask that you would be with Joanne's uh, and Paul's friend, Gail Kelsey, uh, having surgery this week on a mass on his brain. Be with the doctors and the nurses, be with the family, be with Gail as he goes through the surgery. 
that uh, it might be successful. And Father, we lift up Kyle Smith to dealing with pancreatic cancer. It is getting worse, and we just ask you to be with Kyle and to be with his mother, Betty, as she deals with her son having this cancer. To be with that entire family, with, uh, Betty's family and sister Madeline and Marilyn and all of them as they deal with Kyle's uh, cancer and the situation. Father, we're grateful that Lynn Brown has done so well and now has had her hopefully last treatment. We hope that that will go well and that the cancer is gone, that she will be in remission. And Father, we ask that you would be with Tracy Collin and her mother, Nancy, who had surgery this week. Uh, help to heal Nancy and help Tracy in this situation. And uh, Father, we are so grateful that uh, Clint is home. Thank you for listening and answering our prayers. Thank you that Clint is home and that Geraldine won't be spending the night at the hospital. And Father, we're thankful for Clarence's good report from the doctors that he has no physical disease at all. Uh, praise God. Thank you for that. And Father, I ask for prayers for my dad's uh, family and dealing with his passing. Be with his uh, stepdaughter, uh, Stephanie, in the hospital with COVID. Thank you for my father's life of 97 years for being with him and the impact that he had on so many other people. Father, I thank you for all those that are here, either online or in person, and be with them this week as they strive to carry out your teachings in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Steve, I should ask for BJ. Oh, yeah, BJ has, has COVID. COVID. Oh, yeah. Yeah. His yeah. wife came down with it first. He put himself uh -oh. on quarantine, quarantine, and and he thought yeah, it do me a cool. favor. Yeah, don't want it twice as tight. DJ, <laughs> well, what you want to do? That's a little better. Not quite that bad, but got it. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's nice seeing you. How about you? Would you like one or two? One or two? Two. Two? Two? Two minutes and one? Thank you. Would you like one? Very good. Big dog? Yeah, I need to how about you? Would you like a new quarterly? Thank you. It's a quarterly. Nice cold quarterly. And Could thank you, you for the card that you sent. Could you add Larry to the prayer list? He's having a lot of back pain. Larry Stevens? Yes. Well, certainly. Pain in his back. 